I was in Santa Barbara this weekend, Leo, with my girlfriend. Nice. I had an edible. I was walking around, looking off the cliffs at the majestic October sunset. And something clicked for me. Okay. You know how a lot of these kids ask us advice with ladies? Yeah. How to get over breakups. Yeah, it's very important to, for them to, to, they always ask us, they look at us for the, the answers to those questions. And we provide them yeah. with those answers. Yeah. And our answers are always right. Absolutely. Well, I was looking off. I was holding my girlfriend around the waist. We were leaned up against this fence, again, on a cliff overlooking the sunset, the wind blowing. Mm -hmm. Idyllic. It's beautiful. Something out of the end of a film. Mm -hmm. And it came to me, this move that I think can help our audience attain whatever kind of women they want. Okay. I named it, this move. All right. It's one move. It's one move, but I think it's like a Swiss army knife in that it can okay. be applied to almost any situation. Sure. It's called the barf bag behemoth. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting name for this move. Okay. You on your Patreon, you teach guys how to handle women. I do. I so do. you're the guy who I want to run this by first before I start spreading it out there to the public. All right. Sounds good. So barf, barf bag behemoth. Yeah. Okay, let's hear it. The first thing you need is a woman who, for some reason, needs to puke. Okay, so that's interesting. Where, where do you look for this woman, Danny? I'm just. It could be the morning after a party, one of the hungover girls sleeping on the couch. Okay. If she looks a little green around the gills, follow her to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You can go to a local church basement support group for bulimia. Oh. And find a girl whose ribs you can th see through her tube top. Oh, my God. What you do is you get one of these girls, Leo, to vomit into a condom. Oh, my God. Okay. That's where the barf bag part of the title comes in. Oh, my God. Okay. So she's vomiting into a, a condom. Kind of a difficult thing to do, but she's, she's got to really focus on it. You stretch yeah. it out. Yeah, you stretch it. Oh, you hold it for her? You, you, hold, you hold it open. You hold it open. Okay. Yeah, the bar okay. And you might be wondering where the behemoth part comes in. Right. Well, once that condom is filled with chunks and partially digested food and and stomach bile you put it on your penis your erect penis wow you put the condom on and wow. you'll notice that the chunks and the fluid oh add a little bit of girth to your penis hence the behemoth part <laughs> the barf bag behemoth so you now have a thicker cock she now feels better it's warm man. either because of her bulimia or because mm -hmm. her hangover yeah. and you fuck her with your enlarged penis nice okay well yeah, that, that there's there's a little bit of wrong with. It. I feel like there it could be better. The the move could improve a little bit. Um, I feel like it just it's all gonna slip out, and then it, the smell is just gonna overtake. You gotta the get room. a zip tie, Leo. A zip tie, mm -hmm. you zip tie around the bottom mm -hmm. of your cock. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Mm -hmm. Wow, have you ever uh, have, have you ever had that pain when you're like ejaculating and the condom is too tight at the bottom of the ridge there, and it. I feel like that'll be a problem. Yeah, I'm sure Austin has, though. Oh, yeah. some the condoms, they don't fit. They, <laughs> they just they're too fit. tight. I use magnums. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's usually the cock ring around the base of my penis that's the most constrictive. Uh, uh, nice, sure, sure. Nice, nice. Yeah, even a, a condom doesn't even fit around this guy's penis, magnum or otherwise. You know what's fucked up? I know some fucked up fans are actually going to try this. And that it's going to get back to us. Why does it make it fucked up? Well, I mean, Danny... I mean, not only do you have to stock a girl that's about to barf, then you th need to put that barf on your cock, zip tie the bottom of it, yeah. and then stay hard, meanwhile, and then bang some other girl with this fucking... Is it the same girl that barf? Yeah, it should be. It should be it the same girl that barf. It can be whoever you want. <sighs> as, long, as long as you're willing to keep it on, yeah. you can go play ball, as well, we who, say on this I mean, podcast. Well, who am I to say what's right or wrong? I mean, you have way more patrons than I do. So, I mean, maybe I should throw that up on my Patreon. I came up with a lot of these in high school. This used to be my hobby, coming up with not silly sex moves, but moves that I think will help the youth. Oh, I came up with one called a Canadian lumber mill when I was in shop class. Oh, I can't wait to hear what this is about. Mr. Nodoff shop class. Eighth grade. Nodoff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he a cool guy? I think he was like a stoner. I always wanted to be a shop teacher, kind of. Wouldn't that be a, a sick job to have? No, I hate wood. I hate power tools. I hate kids. Oh, my God. Get me out of the running for kids? a shop job. I Why hate, hate kids? kids. Why do you hate kids? You like kids? I think they're the most innocent uh, creatures on the planet. I think like before the world really fucks them up, they're actually more closer to enlightenment than we are right now. Any situation you could be in 
can only be made worse by the presence of children. Ah. You're on an airplane. There's a child nearby. It's worse. You're at a party and some buddy like Jer imagine jerry brings his illegitimate child to a party we're at you think it's his, automatically no. becomes not illegitimate it's not even his kid Excuse you're me. right dude, his you're right. uncared it's, for child does it his even look like him abuse. really does it even look like him i don't know Should probably we bring not. Him a picture well let's bring him a picture of jerry and his kid I, I you know we have to make sure if he's cucked out that hard then we need to get him out of there we need to get him at least not paying his whatever he's paying 250 bucks a month we need to get him we should probably there. just get him out of there regardless yeah even if it is his biological child yeah my girlfriend, I'm sorry, Jerry. My girlfriend and I were talking about this, though. Mm. I think everybody listening to this podcast knows the situation, but quick background if you don't. Fan Jerry, an associate of ours, longest standing member of the crew, has a baby with a heroin addict he met in the Marine Corps. Mm. She lives in Ohio. He sees the baby two weekends a year, and the girl is currently dating another drug addict who's almost just for sure violating Fan Jerry's child. Oh, I mean, he might as well at this point just... Start afresh. Cut his losses. Chalk this up to youthful idiocy yeah. and just uh, let this one go free. Like yeah. when you catch a fish that's small beyond regulations yeah. and you got to throw it back into the water. Just just go up into the woods and say you're, fr you're free now. Yeah. Is that the Wolf of Wall Street? Wolf of Wall Street, yeah. <laughs> the retarded kid. <laughs> the retarded kid. Yeah, this kid. The retarded kid. If not retarded yet, is yeah. going to be... He's probably actually going to be net worse for society than a mm. retarded kid would be, because I'm sure Fan Jerry's child is going to grow up and start committing felonies. You, you never met a kid who just came from the worst circumstances and just dominated and was awesome. We met Tito Ortiz this weekend on a shoot. The Huntington Beach bad boy wow. is going to appear in this video. His dad was a heroin addict, beat him. And now Tito Ortiz is a multimillionaire, drives a Rolls Royce and is running for city council of Huntington Beach. Wow. Does he uh, does he suffer from any CTE type uh, stuff like that? It doesn't or? seem like it. Seems He's always been a terrible public speaker. Yeah, that's common knowledge. But he seems all there completely. He was on the Adam Carolla podcast. Wow. Sounded great. He's not a professional speaker, but he's not right. like Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell, that's a guy with some CTE in his head. Yeah. As a, would you, did he marry Jenna Jameson, one of the old school porn stars? He married Jenna Jameson, who I read a book about. Yeah. It's a good book she wrote, right? The one she wrote? She didn't write it. Oh. Neil Strauss wrote it. She oh, goes, does anybody have any chapstick? My lips. They look good. I would blow a guy oh. for some chapstick right now. <laughs> Jenna Jameson got raped on a boat when she was 14. Yeah. She was addicted to crystal meth before she ever got into porn and got down to 60 pounds or something. I could never look at her sexually again. Even in her prime, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was with Tito Ortiz. He got in trouble for domestic violence, turned out to be a sham. And now she's in Hawaii just abusing drugs day and night while he has full custody in a new relationship with a new girl he's been with for six years. He's drug. You think he's drug and alcohol free? Yeah, Tito Ortiz is a fucking winner, dude. Yeah, Tito Ortiz is a good guy. That's cool. I'm glad he's in the video. Did you did you call him up or you just ran into him? He knew Garrett Garcia, uh -oh. Overboard Humor, who was a mm -hmm. YouTuber. I did a documentary on this weekend. Mm -hmm. And can you we talk about that a little bit, or do you want to save it for the? Uh... Sure, we can talk about it. I'm curious. What Overboard happened? Humor is to me significant because. As far as I've seen, it's the most tragic decline story of any YouTube channel. Now, I know some YouTubers have killed themselves. Some have been carted off to jail for touching kids. Short of that, I think this is as big of a fall a YouTuber can take. Hmm. He went from making 400 grand a year, fucking hot chicks, driving a Porsche, to now he quite literally lives in a van. No, scratch that. A tent down by the river. Does he have a vehicle? Like that Chris Farley sketch. No vehicle. Wow. And I hung out with him all weekend. And the crazy thing is, I fucking really like him. Mm -hmm. We got some really good comedy bits. It's nice. I'm bringing him into the Danny Mullen fold. I love it. He's going to appear in more videos. That's great, dude. I'm, I can't wait to meet him. This guy, I knew that he had a lot of potential, that he was for real, that he could make a comeback. When he went up to a guy on the beach nico was filming long lens from the huntington beach pier mm. overboard humor this kid garrett lays on top of this gigantic football looking offensive lineman oh black guy lays on top of him and oh starts God. talking about fucking this guy's girl while his girl is right there the girl starts dying laughing while the football guy loses his shit shoves garrett and starts trying to fight him oh my god I'm going to be licking my lips like a, somebody rolling on ecstasy for this whole podcast. My lips are so chapped. Does he just have nerves of steel? He has nerves of steel. 
And uh, surprisingly, he's not a drug addict. Really? I chalked up the entire decline beforehand. I had my mind made up that this guy was doing heroin. Mm. I spent the night with him, and Nico spent the night with him in a tent about the size of this couch. Oh we God. were all sleeping on top of each other. You didn't sleep much. Didn't sleep much. We went out into his camp down by the river, like mm. the Chris Farley sketch. Slept there, visited all of his local haunts in Huntington Beach, went to Balboa Island and harassed a bunch of rich people. It was like fucking ball of a weekend so what why is he living in a tent if it's not drugs he doesn't do drugs he doesn't do drugs his channel was on top of the world he was getting numbers leo i kid you not 85 million views per video oh my god not routinely but routinely he was getting a million two million eight hundred thousand six hundred thousand four million and then out of nowhere it's this is going to be a lot of this in the intro to this week's video he got hit by some sort of crisis. And that's what I was really trying to get to the bottom of this weekend is what this crisis was because all of a sudden appeared on his channel a 10 video vlog series about how his life was falling apart. How his girl, who both Leo and I tried to message yeah, as a joke, she, we, tried, we tried to see if she'd respond yeah, to us. Yeah. She eventually she responded. responded to you. She eventually responded. But I mean, how can you resist a guy of my stature? I agree. She fucked up his life, had his child, a fan Jerry esque situation, yeah, by the way. Yeah. But there are clips of him waking up in mental hospitals on there, getting restrained by police. There's this 10 video window that he later privated. I talked him into unprivating it for the sake of this picture that I'm shooting, mm -hmm. this uh, biography. And then he tr went back to trying to shoot his old style of content, but it was as if, as if the essence had been drained from his body. It was never yeah. the same. And the views declined week by week, year by year, until now he live streams from laundry mats and has about 30 viewers at a time and is just asking for money pretty much. Mm. But I hung out with him and the guy is funny, smart, sober, and willing to do fucking whatever. And wow. I think it just comes down to a crazy mom and dad, essentially. But How did I'm, you come to meet this guy? Did you know him as he was a YouTuber, like before and saw his videos? And I stuff? was familiar with him, yeah. 2014, I had a weekend where I came back from Vegas, hung over, not just from booze, but from lack of sleep and a bunch of goddamn Molly, Austin. <laughs> Don't get any ideas. You'll pay for those fucking vendors. And I, I stumbled across one of his videos where he was going up to people and he was doing user generated comments. So the people in his comment section would write something really offensive, just like our fans say all yeah. the time in the comment sections. But it was a game with him. He would tell his fans to leave out of context, horribly offensive comments. He would take those, walk up to people in a subway, in a library, at an auto zone, and just whisper into people's ears. Sometimes when I'm bored, I pretend my cock is an electric eel and run around a <laughs> playground. Things like that. Nice. <laughs> and uh, he would he has this autistic quality about him where you don't think it's a joke. You don't think it's some fucking new age, Yeezy wearing, $300 haircut fuckwad. You think it's a legitimate crazy kid. So people give him these very credible reactions like, dog, if you don't get away from me, I'm going to fucking knock your ass out. I'm uh, I don't know why I'm, I'm pretending I'm a black dude all of a sudden. Yeah, what the fuck? Dude? He targeted black people in all his videos. That's why they have they tend to have solid reactions. They are col yeah. colorful in, in their demeanor. And I, I've always seen his videos, but then I've always been very cognizant of his decline, too. And he hit me up during the sunfish shenanigans oh, wow. of last November with Ruman. Speak about a channel in decline. There's one right there. <laughs> and uh, he started hitting me up and I got the idea somewhere around last spring. Yeah, speaking of the sunfish and declines, we were looking at Ruman's Instagram page recently. Hmm. Ruman has been blaming the Instagram algorithm for fucking over his channel and his Instagram page. I knew you wouldn't like that. Oh. because he gets about a thousand views a video now a thousand likes a picture and i went and watched his last sketch he did and i don't even want to say that it looks like he thought it up on the spot because we think up this whole podcast on the spot and artistically yeah. uh we make his shit we look like the david in comparison to uh, a retarded kid smearing his feces on a wall in a psych ward. That's the discrepancy between this podcast and his on-the-spot art. Nice. 
So, yeah, he puts up. Can we play his newest video, Austin, or is that going to be technically out of your league? Remote. Austin, it was a fucking five minute debacle before this podcast started with Austin struggling with the audio. <laughs> Can we pull up the Instagram? What's the name of his YouTube channel? No, oh. no, go to his Instagram. Okay, gotcha. Room on with a bunch of U's or M's or something. I'm sure you it's can find it. It's a couple M's. It's a couple of M's. Yeah. And uh, go to the one with his girlfriend's titties in the fucking thumbnail. It's one of the last three or four videos. Okay. And I actually saw somebody in the comments with the audacity to blame his decline in viewership on the fact that he is brown and packy yeah. and Instagram not wanting his content to succeed. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. I didn't think it was a great idea. I mean, I don't, you know, to to write all that stuff on there and stuff like that. I think he was worried. He hit me up about the sunfish stuff. Uh, this uh, you put it on your story, thinking it might have been him again. And I was like, Oh, oh yeah, no, there's going to be a resurgence yeah. of anti rumon sentiment. Yeah, there is no. a new sunfish people who we're going to talk about in just a second. Surely. But what do you think about the conspiracy theory that YouTube hates brown no, or Instagram hates brown he's people? Fine. He's happy again. Uh, um, I talked to him. He's fine now. But. uh I don't know. He he's clearly not putting a hundred percent of his effort, and we've talked about this, uh, you know, into anything, and and he's distracted, and he knows that, and uh, but you know, he's 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 got to focus up and, and try to figure out, you know, what what direction he wants to go in and stuff. You know? Can we do I've a quick the video ready? Go oh, great, great. Can we do a quick role play before this goes on? I'm Mark Zuckerberg. Right. I'm telling you your priorities. You're one of my managers. All right. Hey, um, Neil. Yeah. I know you were really busy with making sure we stay unbiased with the election ads. Yes. I know we were uh, prioritizing keeping the child porn mm -hmm. off IGTV. Right. I got uh, something new I need you to enforce for me. Okay. Yeah. Anything, Mark? Uh, no, no problem. Yeah. Um, uh, brown people are getting too much reach on Instagram. Oh, I have seen that firsthand. I agree. What do you want me to do about it, Mark? Um, well, right now, if mm -hmm. any of these people, if they look like they could come from the Middle East mm -hmm. or in, I can't even with these camel jockeys I can't keep track it mm -hmm. are they eating hummus or are they eating curry it doesn't mm -hmm. matter I need you to reduce their views by 90% gotcha if they're in between maybe look a little Hispanic uh, nix them also just, just get rid of it all right okay gotcha. if you can hold up an Albertson's paper shopping bag yeah. next to the creator's profile mm -hmm. picture and mm -hmm. you can't tell if he's lighter darker if it's close yeah just cut his reach and uh, I'm gonna show you a video right now mm -hmm. I'm Mark Zuckerberg, right? Yeah. I'm a fucking genius. What yeah, I say, course, yeah. this is a great fucking video. I'm a genius. I say so. Okay. It's one of the funniest things, the best written things I've ever seen. Okay. It's great, but mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. The creator is too dark. We got to get, we got to suppress this. Gotcha. I want you to give me an honest assessment of it after it plays. Okay. Uh, let it play. Mr. Arian behind the keyboard over there. Um, can I get a fresh lemonade? There you go. Fresh lemonade. This is Minute Maid on it. Get the fucking Minute Maid and go. It's not even fucking hot. I'm trying to make a quick buck on hustle. Right? It's not even a real register. Press pause, Austin. No more of this Zuckerberg bullshit. Is Rumon addicted to drugs? Because a crippling drug addiction is the only way to explain that. That is a guy addicted to heroin who needs money and is desperately trying to stick to his old business. Like I mother. said, I think he's been distracted and he i don't know i i truly don't believe he's putting out the, his best content he didn't even use a lapel yeah mic. he didn't use a lapel he didn't subtitle that yeah i know that I is couldn't even hear there isn't even a mic either. right now I guys agree. you can't see we have a road mic on top of our main camera capturing backup audio mm, he is test. using just the side gill camera on his panasonic camcorder well, yeah, and I, and that's why I didn't think it was a good idea for him to complain to, and you know and blame Instagram or the fact that he's brown. I I think it was just a weak moment for him, and I and I'm pretty sure that uh, you know he's not going to be. I don't know that he's going to do that anymore or not, but uh, I hope he doesn't. I Every doesn't. hardship in my life is because I'm white, so I sort of understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's uh. You know he's he's my friend. I don't I don't like talking mad shit about him. But yeah, I do agree that he he's not doing his best content at all. And I don't think that that's great. You know he uh, he did get a he got a line uh, in a Animal Kingdom though, which is cool. He just I don't know, know what Animal Kingdom it's is. It's a television show on TNT. So mm -hmm. it, you know he's gonna be in a th that was good for him. Uh, yeah. After this happened, it, it brought his uh, confidence back up and shit. So yeah. hopefully, what was the uh, criteria for that booking? Having zero fucking talent. <laughs> Shut the he uh 
he's got some talent. I mean, he's not he's he not the worst a, actor. He's he not he's a good zero actor. talent. Can he's we not, admit that? That he has zero talent? Yeah. I can't I can't admit that. Also, in things that make you you know, uh, talent matters, but you know that it kind of matters the least, right? Or almost the least, right? Like hard work and dedication. Okay, not hard work and dedication. Clearly not the guy who uh, made that video's strong suits. <laughs> Did you see that he's, piece he's of half, shit? He half asses. I think he's half assing stuff on Instagram. And I, I'm i confused as to why he thinks that, you know, they, uh, they're doing, they're not doing well because I know that he's not putting his, his entire effort into it. He's not putting... Um, Leo, mm -hmm. I could if Austin just put a camera in my face right now mm -hmm. and he woke me up in the middle, not right now, in the middle of the night, I'm going to make this more mm -hmm. troublesome. If it was after I filmed the Edward Ford Hansen coronavirus shoot where I was yeah. blacked out drunk, Austin just smacks me in the face and hits record on his iPhone. Yeah. I could come up with a better 20 second piece of content than that. Yeah. There's no question you know about it. Up. People are going to think that this is the sunfish again. You, there, this is not the sunfish. This people. is not the sunfish. This is not enemy number one. I'm he, sorry, Ruma. This is not. This is not look, the new dude, sunfish. I feel that he's probably hanging out. He's he's fucking his girlfriend. He's over there on a. He's hanging out with her that day, and he just fucking decides film something real quick with his phone, and it doesn't do well. And obviously, it's not going to do well. You know what I mean? And I think that he's just uh, you know he's copping out a little bit, and and uh, you know. Blaming the fact that he's Pakistani and shit, which is uh, ridiculous. But yeah, I think it's just a weak moment. I mean, we've all we've all been there. Who are these people like Ruman who come to L.A. and think they can work for 20 minutes a week and just be rich and famous? A lot of a lot of people think that clearly you know? Ruman thinks that. Yeah. And every now and then there is an example of someone that does make it like that. But it's pretty few far between. And those people are the ones that give everybody hope. Unfortunately, I mean, look, I've been here my entire life, so I kind of I kind of shut that th way of thinking. I, I don't even like to be around people like that because there's a ton of people. I mean, you haven't been around when when acting was cool, when you could get on a television show and it was like a an awesome thing to do when it was uh, when there were less television shows. There wasn't all these Netflix shows like it was cool. You would you would see yourself on TV and all your friends would hit you up about it. And that it was awesome. But then there was people they would they would come into town that just got off the fucking Greyhound and would get on L.A. casting and get a, an extra gig where you fucking sit around. You're one of 300 people in playing in a town hall meeting. And then you'd take like this picture with Denzel, like when he's on lunch and then you tell everybody you're in a Denzel movie and that you're fucking making it in Hollywood. You got there and in three weeks you're in a Denzel movie. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those are the people that have kind of ruined Hollywood for many people because it's it's become this bullshit sham who's faking it better than every than the other guy you know and what it really should be about is a, a fucking artist coming out here and being good at something and learning how to act and doing it for fucking 10 years like stand up it's the same idea I mean it, there's there's this book about how it takes seven years to crack into Hollywood and you have to learn how to be a good actor you know you have to you have to you know go you have to have life experience often and i think you know i've been in i i take an acting class with ruman and he he's not a he's definitely got some talent in the in you know in the acting world and you know he's not do you think i have some talent in the acting world yeah i think you're also yeah i mean yes you somehow take from that whatever you're molested obviously mm -hmm. as a child and you take from that well, who's a better great. actor me or ruman I, I can't say. Say it. I've never seen you in acting class. I think you're a really good actor. I think you're a great performer. Who's a better actor, performer, me or Ruman? I, I can't say. You know how many acting classes I've taken? One in high school, yeah. and I was cutting every other day to smoke weed out of a Coke you can. Did, you, you did great on that sketch with, uh, with what'd you say? You were what? Out of a Coke can? You get the Coke can, you crush it, you cut, cut a fucking couple holes in it with a little pocket knife. Oh, uh, yeah. You light that shit up, you inhale <laughs> that sweet Mary Jane and some nice lead-based paint off the can, too. Were you fucking smoking weed in, in high school a lot? No, I just wanted to seem like more of a delinquent. <laughs> that sounds like me in high you're, school. That's exactly what I was doing every morning. Uh, you're supremely talented. I I. Get it. You're you're very talented. I'm not gonna say who's more talented than here. It doesn't matter. All right. I think you're doing a lot better than him in YouTube and in general. Here's so. why. Okay. Can we clear this up and say it's not a race thing? It's not a talent thing. Ruman. It's because last week. Let's see here. I probably put in 13 or 14 hour days Monday through Thursday. I edited a video from 6 a.m. 
to 2 p.m. on Friday, drove immediately to Orange County, and was filming all the way up till 7 p.m. on Saturday night. I've been on shoots I think, with you, I, man. Is I, that, I think it might be like a 90, 100-hour week. Mm-hmm. That's why, bitch. It's not because yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, who's married to an Asian girl, is a racist. It's not because your fans are racist. It's because you're a lazy bastard. I don't want to call him a bastard. Does he have a good relationship with his father? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he he's, does, yeah. He, he's spoken for. Jerry's son is a bastard. Yeah, Jerry's Room son is a bastard. It's because you're a lazy... I can't call him a sunfish either because we got another sunfish. It's because you're a lazy fucking fame-chasing... I'm out of other insults to give room on, but you're lazy. That's what it comes down to. Okay, buddy? So put in a little harder work. I think that he's he's told me that he's uh, gotten a lot of inspiration from watching you grow exponentially with your dedication to the craft, but not only that, your ability to to stay consistent with those long days of work. And, uh, you know, I think he admires you, so you don't... I was saying, no. not taking a lot from it. He's not taking a lot. Austin, I got to call my dad. I made a few bad investments. <laughs> I'm going to need some money. Yes. Let me piss real quick, though. Hello? Uh, hey, Dad. Hi. Hey, What's Dad. Up? Um, no, not too much. Um, uh, how about that Tampa Bay game yesterday, huh? Huh? Quite a game. Yeah. Quite a game. Yeah. Um, you sound down. Is something wrong? Yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit of a money issue has come up. What's that? <sighs> Dad, I made a really, really stupid investment. All right. What? Tell me. Is this a joke or did you do this series? No, no, no. It's. I mean, can I just tell you about it real quick? It's. It's definitely yeah. not a joke, and I'm definitely really, really upset, and I don't know what I'm going to do. There's this guy. He's huge in the LA scene. His name is Clout Kid Colby. He's an entrepreneur, and he's a guy who said he knew a lot about stocks, and he had a company he was starting up. Um, do you know what TikTok is? Why aren't you on your regular phone? I had to use a friend's phone. I'm sorry. My phone died. I'm up in Santa Barbara right now. It's sort of a long story. Dad? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. Um, do you know what TikTok is? Yeah. Um, he had this this business idea um, that it was a lot of the prominent tiktok people who are they're sort of in my circle here in la but they're it's really popular with the younger demographic right now it was going to be like a skateboard company and i thought hey that's perfect that's something i know and they say right you know um like write about or invest in the things you know i think i forget who said that but um it was going to be like a skateboard company with these tiktok stars on the bottom of the decks and i've i've i'm in the stock market right now but I wanted to diversify too and get into something that I could that I could sink my teeth into. And um, I think you're bullshitting me because it's taking too long here, Danny. Tell me what's wrong. I I lost thirty fucking grand. How? Because I gave it to this guy without any written anything. He brought in one of the skateboards. No writing, nothing. I mean, he's really big. I mean, he's out at this steakhouse. It's called Boa. It's down in Beverly Hills. It's like a lot of credible people that I like the Nelk guys. I know, you know, I know them. They've been they've been in Instagram pictures with them. They even collabed on a TikTok. And so I, I thought Clout Kid Kobe was legit. So you have nothing to prove you gave it to him? Did you write a check? What'd you do? I cashed it. I went into Bank of America and just got it out in fucking cash. So you gave him cash. Yeah. Fucked. Yeah. 30, 30 racks. Anybody, anybody witness this? I mean, one of my roommates, but they're so fucking stoned half the time. They don't know what's going on. You're fucked. <laughs> I mean, you can contact the lawyer. That's what I would do. And, and see if you want to and tell them you're going to contact the district attorney. <sighs> I don't know what I'm going to do. And do you we got have emails to substantiate anything. 
I, between him and te- her text messages. I mean, we Snapchatted a couple times, but those disappear, so it's not that substantial. Jeez, Danny. And I, it's, mean, it sucks because we're right coming. For, what's he say? How do you know? It's, what's he told you? Fuck you or what's he said? No, there's just these pictures of him now, and he's down in South Beach, and he's fanning out all the fucking hundreds I gave him. And there's a Lambo in the back, and he's got this chick named Courtney, who's, I think she's got 6.5 mil on Instagram, fake ass, big tits, and he's just having a weekend with her, and he's not responding to me. And uh, the TikTok star skate deck thing is not coming to fruition, he says. Well, I mean, I would... uh... Tell them you're going to contact the district attorney, mm-hmm. local authorities, and, uh, uh, you know, tell them you want your money back, you know, right away. Yeah. And, and uh, contact the lawyer. Have the lawyer contact him. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's the only thing I can tell you to do. I mean, geez, Danny, you would never, I wouldn't give 500 fucking dollars to somebody without having it in writing what the agreement is. Yeah, have it, with that kind of money, you got to have fucking lawyers involved. Yeah, it just I mean, he's you just you can't give that to anybody. It's man. it's like him and I met up for sushi and he said he knew Paul Rodriguez, the pro skater. I don't and I a fuck if, he, if he's a, if, if it's another judge asking me uh, for business, it's all in fucking writing how much when you get it back. I mean, it's, it's a fucking business agreement. Mm-hmm. You don't do anything that's not in writing. Uh, and and that kind of investment is just prime for a ripoff. Yeah. The only thing you invest in Danny in your life mm-hmm. is is this, is Vanguard. Mm-hmm. And I know Karen's been telling you to put your money in separate stock accounts and get aggressive and shit. Yeah, you I don't fucking do that. I actually ran. You put it in fucking managed to Warren Buffett, a yeah. billionaire. Yeah, yeah. All of his kids, he says, put it in Vanguard. Leave it. <laughs> yeah. Don't let. They don't, anybody, nobody manages your accounts for you. Mm-hmm. Nobody touches your fucking money for you. you. You don't give them access to your money ever. Yeah, dad. The that's business uh, managers don't, nobody. And that's, uh, nobody. One, that's one of the ways he was able to steal my trust, Clout Kid Kobe, is him and I bonded because we'd both seen a couple Warren Buffett videos on YouTube. And he seemed like he knew his stuff. You're fucking it, with me, I think. You're fucking with me. What do you mean? <laughs> that's what, well, I don't know. It just feels weird, though, some of the stuff you're saying. I don't know, I, but if this really happens, son, yeah, I, I'm extremely sorry, but you got to contact the lawyer, okay. see how much that's going to cost you, because if it's going to chase you down, I mean, you spend thirty grand to get thirty grand. It's that's a wor- waste. Yeah, and I would tell, I would just tell him you're going to contact. I mean, you can have the lawyer write a letter without too much money being spent on mm-hmm. your part mm-hmm. and threatening suits, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and threatening to uh, uh, alert. Uh, people online yeah. uh, uh, to, to what he's done. And then I would also, uh, I would look for all your emails, see if you can contact Instagram to recover anything that you've communicated yeah, yeah. about this transaction. Mm-hmm. Any emails, text messages, anything to substantiate it. You, I wouldn't give a thousand dollars to to anybody without it fucking being recorded. Yeah. A check and the purpose for it and what it is. When I sell a car, yeah, to you know, when I put them on yeah. stuff, I write out a contract um, so that they can't say because they, they'll say, "Oh, he said this, he promised that," and how do you disprove it, um, Dad? In yeah. the, in the meantime, um, I, I know it's been so long since I've asked for this, but would it, like a little bit of financial assistance be you know like out of the question? Where's where's the money you put in the bank accounts and stuff oh, to, uh, to, to to your investment? I I got I got really crazy too in the stock market. I um uh, I mean people have been yelling about airlines and and oil stocks and I the guy I've been that I've been talking to you about for months and months the guy who advised all the oil and airplane stocks he got this this the uh, hot idea about fructose. And um, uh, you're fucking around. You're fucking around. You're fucking around. Don't keep. You're what, you, fucking you think, around. Okay, just because. 
<laughs> yeah, I am. God damn it. Yeah, I know you are. I shouldn't have got yeah. into fructose. I, I yeah. It wasn't the fructose. It was that she took the stock money out. That's fuck you full of shit. <laughs> Dad, you're on our podcast, the Leo and Danny uh, show. Yeah, I don't use that shit. You're fucking around. You can't use that. You can't do this, Danny. Uh, Why, I, Dad? I, I'm a judge. I have ethical rules. You can't be But you, you, were being, you were being so responsible the whole time, Dad. You said nothing yeah. irresponsible. Or inappropriate. Yeah, I thought it was something you're fucking. <laughs> All right, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, was, right there. What's that? Yes, yeah, the, let's lay Mr. The Mullen. There. That, yeah, Mr. Mullen. That was tell him, uh, fuck in, him too. <laughs> <laughs> tell him to fuck him and the horse he rode in. Too. Uh, the, <laughs> the horse he rode in is uh, podcast producer Austin. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Fuck was, him too. <laughs> da- All right, guys. Dad, my investments yeah. are very safe. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So yeah. And, uh, all right, guys. All right, Dad. Thank <laughs> you. We appreciate you, Dad. Uh, all right. Uh, fuck you and all of the horses. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, right. Thank uh, you, love sir. Love you, Dad. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was so fucking funny, dude. Fucking clout kid Kobe, man. <laughs> kid kid Kobe, me. dude. Your dad was so disappointed, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Son? Uh, when this happened, I mean, I'm so sorry about that. You're going to have to contact a lawyer. Cloud Kid Kobe, he dude. fucked me over for thirty G's, dude. He was gonna go like he was gonna get off the phone and talk to your mom and just be like, ah, Danny's just, <laughs> he's never gonna change. He's this is it. He's gonna be a loser. He's a loser. I wish I knew more TikTok kids so I could get more specific about the skate decks that the TikTok kids are. <laughs> And he was throwing the hundreds, bro, in, in Florida, Miami, with some with some check, dude, with six point five million on Instagram. Fake ass, nice titties. I think when you got when you got super uh, specific about the numbers and shit, your dad was like, "It doesn't sound right." It, uh, he's so dude. He's such a nice guy, dude. dude. Papa Mullen, the real Papa Mullen. Wow, what a legend! That guy sounds like a like a good guy. Oh, he's a good dude. Yeah. Let's talk now. And Rumon, I'm sorry I lost my cool on Rumon. Yeah. Dude. My fury got reignited when I saw that Instagram video. That is inexcusably bad. It's pretty been, bad. It's, been, oh, it's bad. I couldn't yeah. be, it was literally unlegible. I could not hear it. It's bad. He needs That's I know that he can do better. Inaudible, yeah. He's done he's done better and he can definitely do better. I mean, look, he had to sell he, he had some financial hardship out here. He had to sell his like really great a forty dollar lavalier mic that would have made that thing actually <laughs> no, yeah, listenable. I, yeah, no, no. I'm telling you, man. I I know he could do better, dude. I know he could do better, and um, you know, hopefully, this is the kind of kick in the ass that everybody needs. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's right. It's true. And I wish, yeah, there there should be more of that. But look, it's it's fine. I mean, you know, he's gonna be okay. Huh. Kick in the ass. We can use that as a segue here. I don't want to give too much away from the video. Yeah. But one of the things that Garrett from Overboard Humor, the guy I did the documentary on this weekend, one of the reasons he got so huge, and yes, people, I'm getting into the real new Sunfish. He got huge through comment trolling. Mm. People leaving the comments down, the offensive stuff, and then him saying it. It's a genre on YouTube that he originated. Sick. Five other channels got up into the million sub mark because of his idea. Wow. We brought that back because I thought it was funny for our Excuse me, shoot. Mm-hmm. That's when he went up to the big black guy who looked like an offensive tackle for an NFL team and said, sometimes I use my pet hamster to wipe up my jizz. Oh he my whispered God. that into the guy's ear while he was lying atop him. I can't believe he got on top of him. Yes. That's crazy. One of mine, and I want to message this guy on Twitter who gave it to me. By the way, most of the people who tweeted at me these phrases were fucking awful. Mm-hmm. So many of them sucked so much. It was multiple sentences way trying way too hard but one of the funny ones was i am gonna suck off a rattlesnake blow a koala and then finish in a mountain goat <laughs> so this was right after garrett went up and laid on that offensive tackle so, ridiculous. so i knew i had to step my game up i go up to this girl who's on the beach alone on a beach towel i approach her head on she sees me coming starts to get a little uncomfortable stops paying attention to the jane austen novel she's reading i walk right up stare at her for a little bit she's afraid to bring her eyes up and look at me then i get down into a prone position look her right in the fucking eye take off my shades and say i'm gonna blow a rattlesnake suck off two koalas then finish in a fucking mountain goat (laughs) this girl gets up looks like she's just seen a zombie and just starts fleeing down the beach 
not in full run, but basically trotting like, with purpose away from me. Like fast. Scared. Oh, God. As if I flashed a knife in an alley. Hmm. That's how threatened this girl was. It was bad to the point where I was apologizing, saying, like, it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> I would love to message this kid. I want to get the guy on the phone who started this whole fucking thing. It's not going to happen right now. Afterwards, we film a couple more bits. We go in. We tie up a loose end on the Tito Ortiz storyline we had going on. We go back to our car. Pretty much done for the day. It's me, Nico. Nico's fucking brother, Brendan. You know Brendan? Yeah, yeah, came by. Alcoholic. A little loopy. 2.0, yeah. Two yeah. Po- what do you mean 2.0? He's like Nico 2.0. He is a lot. I think they're very similar. He makes Nico look like a scholar. Yeah, in many ways. Yeah, he's he's yeah he's more fucked up than Nico for sure. He makes Nico look like Russell Crowe in A Beautiful Mind. <laughs> he's just a few years ahead. He's a few years ahead of Nico. Apparently, pulls some solid tail though. He gets laid. Yeah, apparently. somehow. I don't know why I'm making such a big deal of Nico's brothers being there, but it, <laughs> his one brother being there. Brendan, yeah. And then it's overboard humor. While we're packing up, getting ready to go, just bullshitting around my Mercury Sable, these two guys come up. Walking fast, chest puffed up, and I think, okay, for the second shoot in a row, we got violence. Yeah. I rip off my jacket, throw it on the back of the sable, and I think that makes them mellow out a little bit because they're like, oh, this guy's going to try to fight us. So mm-hmm. they go on the defensive, say, hey, 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 we're not going to fight. We just wanted to know why you're walking up to women saying a bunch of offensive shit. Yeah. Austin, can you pull up this guy's Instagram right now so we can see him? I haven't seen this guy yet. I didn't sure. know who he was. Mm-hmm. He starts saying, you scared my wife. I guess it was his wife that I went up and told I finished into a mountain goat. (laughs) And after talking a little bit, I say, you know what, man? You've got a point. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Out of context, I know that was really horrendous and probably seemed like boneheaded stuff, too. But I can assure you it's going to fit into a larger narrative, a larger video, and it's going to be smart and entertaining. His bozo friend pipes up. It was fucking bottom tier content and you're a loser. And I say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you bring this guy along just to say the F word, by the way? And uh, I'm going to have it on Patreon. I think I'm going to upload this full unedited clip. Nico starts filming, I think, 20 or 30 seconds into it. So we're going to have most of it. And I'm going to try to not make myself sound like a big hero here Mm -hmm. because uh, I know some people are going to see the video and I don't want to misrepresent myself. But what really pissed me off and what I've been stewing on all weekend is not only this guy's friend saying it was bottom tier content, but this fucking guy, Willie, what's his name, Austin? Uh, Willie G Fitness. Willie or G Fitness. Will G. Giorne or something like that. Will Giorne Fitness. This guy having the goddamn balls to say to me, I'm telling you, man, not only am I a big YouTuber, I advise a lot of other massive YouTube channels. You're not going to have the staying power in this industry with the kind of content you're shooting. And I said verbatim, well, first of all, I guarantee I make much more money than you, dude. So I don't appreciate you patronizing me the way you're patronizing me right now. I wish that was pretty much it. I wish I had dug in much deeper, asked him, hey, how many subscribers do you have? How loyal is your... What kind of content are you making, Willie? Right. And bless his soul, Nico, right when I get home from the shoot, sends me this guy's fucking channel, and I watch it, and I see his Instagram, and I just... I I can't fall asleep for three hours. I'm pacing (laughs) around with my knuckles clenched. Can we... Yeah, can we play It's fair use if we watch a video. It's fair use. Yeah, let's see. I, I want to watch a video. I've never, I haven't even seen this guy. I don't even know what he looks like. You know what? I don't want to do this because if we put this up right now, I guarantee this guy who fancies himself a successful YouTuber and a YouTube coach, yeah. this is the fucking kind of guy who's going to, there's going to be a copyright complaint. Yeah, yeah. we'll take it down. I'm going to have to pay for a lawyer. Yeah. I don't even want to do it. But let me give you a good rundown of what this guy does. Yo, what up, Fit Fam? It's your boy Willie. Just got done competing this Thursday at the local SoCal Lifters Inc. I'm feeling pumped. My tan, as you can see, is looking good. Can finally eat carbs. Ha ah! ha! Oh shit. This just the worst shit. He told my listeners, my loyal fans, my now speaking for Danny Mullen, this fucking guy walked up to your Lord and Savior and said. <laughs> 
you're not going to have staying power in this industry. Willie G Fitness. What? It, what is he? Uh, I have four. I have four thousand subscribers on YouTube. Check this guy out, dude. And I can tell you right now, Danny Mullen, with half a million subscribers, with two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand videos every week, you're not going to last in this business. I call my I call my fans the the fit fag family. <laughs> I lift a, my bench press, Danny Mullen. Uh, it's getting good, okay? I'm, I'm in competition shape right now, so I'm slimming. My max isn't nearly where it was this summer, but I can tell you right now, I know what's good for your channel, Danny Mullen. This guy oh, needs wow. to be... I. Speaking of sunfish, yeah. I want to put a metal hook through this guy's cheek, throw him on a grill, and you cook like, him on like both sides. like one of his pictures. <laughs> I, I went on it, Leo. I was up till 3 a.m. on a harassment campaign, just liking his images, leaving no. sarcastic comments on his YouTube videos. No. I was stalking him. I was letting him know, and then I fucking sounded the Danny Mullen trumpet. You liked so many pictures, dude. <laughs> you sounded the, tr the sound of the trumpet? I was trying to actually blow into my hands and make it. <laughs> That's the Danny Mullen. <sighs> That's nice, dude. Huh? Can you pull that picture up? Hey, Austin. Austin, get this picture up. Austin. Okay. <sighs> this. This right here. Yeah. That picture. That guy was giving Danny Mullen. Try ask him if he wants to be on the show right now. What if we, what if we we get lucky? Speaking you know what? Do it, Leo. I'm do follow it. Follow him, and I'm gonna message him. Say, hey, buddy. This is this guy. Can you pull up that picture of him holding the camera selfie style? Austin? I already. I just did. That, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. We want to hear more about well, how we can improve our content. I would love it. I yeah. would love for him to call in and tell me more. This is like every kid with a 2002 Honda Civic at an auto show in front of a mall on a Saturday night. It's like one of those kids giving Jeff Gordon advice on how to drive faster. It's like Ruban giving Bill Burr advice on how to have a tighter set at the comedy store after Bill Burr gets off stage. It's like Austin giving Jamie from JRE advice on how to produce a better show. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Leo telling Jason Momoa how to be better at everything. God damn it, dude. That's fucked up. I'm, I think I'm a better baseball player than Jason Momoa. He might be slightly more handsome because he has green eyes. I think if you dug deep enough into his bio, you would find that his college stats eclipsed yours. God, if he did better than baseball, you know who's a who's really good at baseball? That random uh, Mr. Beast. He has videos hitting mammoth home runs. He looks like a little dweeb. I this guy, does he, is this picture still up on the screen? I, I hit it's him up, anymore. dude. Let's see. No, I get it back up. This guy giving me advice on how to improve my channel is not, like Jerry. Nuts. Giving advice to Mr. Beast on how to increase your YouTube viewership. Nuts, dude. We have a mutual friend. We have a mutual friend, Danny Mullen. You follow him. <laughs> it's like Austin's sister giving advice to Mother Teresa on how to not be a cum guzzling whore. <laughs> <laughs> dude, oh God. If he called, bro, it would be the funniest thing besides the, the phone call to your father because that was fucking hilarious, dude. That was that was so fucking funny. I don't know. I'm gonna be crying laughing about that later. Willie G Fitness calling in, dude, to give us advice, dude. We gotta play along for a while, and then you really just gotta lay into him. Willie Jerome. Willie G Fitness. Tell me why L O Y G Fitness. I don't know why I'm so fucking pissed off about this. It's because this guy, I could tell in the way they approached the car, they thought. We don't want to get in a fight. We've never been in a fight in our life, both Willie G Fitness and his friend. I'm yeah. sure this guy is some, I said this before about David Goggins. I'm sure this kid, Willie G Fitness, is soft as a Beverly Hills dog bed. Yeah. Born in Orange County. He had 47 views on a, on a video last week on his YouTube. Doesn't have a mark on his fucking face. Never been in his, hey, he's pulling in 47 views? Yeah, 47 oh, I, views, I take it dude. all back. I'm sorry. He came up thinking, oh, we're going to intimidate these little punks. But he thought in the back of his mind, at the very least... I can clown them on their YouTube channel because I'm pulling in 47 views. <laughs> because when I post a picture I hope this of me flexing my video. deltoids, it gets 800 fucking likes, bitch. I, need I always got my Instagram account to fall back on. <laughs> this guy doesn't know. 
the the Danny Mullen fucking army. Oh god! If they had been there, if this was a fan meetup, he wouldn't have gotten out of that parking lot alive. I think probably. What do you think he drives? He probably drives a Jeep. Probably he's drives a, a Jetta. He's a Jeep guy, dude. He definitely got a Jeep for like. He drives a Jeep, dude. I bet you we can find his car if we go down far enough. Something... It's a fucking Jeep, dude. <laughs> I'm nice, a genius, Leo. dude. A Fuck, Leo, up high. He wouldn't have gotten out of that parking lot without a Danny Mullen fan putting something flammable in his gas tank and then igniting <laughs> that thing. A fucking Jeep, dude. God, it is it is the kind of guy. He's an Orange County guy, though. Like, he Nico, like Nico, when he drinks, dude, he gets really annoying about little things. Like, what do you mean we're not going to eat? Uh, come on. I want a burger. I want food, Danny. Like, it's Nico, dude. Nico, I, I got him to sleep in the tent with overboard humor He's on so this fucking him. shoot, but it took everything in yeah. my power to get him into the I'm fucking sure. woods to sleep I'm in this sure. tent. This guy, if one of the fans blew up his fucking car, if... What would happen was he would call his dad like I just did, but it wouldn't yeah. be a joke. Hey, dad, uh, I know you gave me 20 G's last month. Can you make it 30 now? Yeah. You know, 35. Because I want to get my Jeep. You know, I got to get those custom fucking hubcaps, too. Yeah. I'm sure he's got custom hubcaps. Oh, yeah. What do you think else oh, he's got he, on his he's Jeep? Got, he's got something that he absolutely doesn't need, like the air intake thing for like when you're submerged in water five feet. His dad's like, what are you? You going on a safari? He's like, no, it just looks cool. Just in case I need to go through a river, dad. Yeah. Or yeah are you gonna, well, what do you mean? Are you uh, Vulcan, Are you trying to overthrow a small government in South America? Yeah, exactly. Or you have to sneak in in the middle of the night, throw a jungle? Yeah, yeah. Is that what you need your Jeep for? Yeah, exactly. Dude, I hate those guys that, yeah, whenever you see the air intake thing, that, that, that it's like it looks like it's literally coming out of their fucking, it goes from their engine and it has like a little thing going like for, like up. You've probably seen Austin. You know what that is, right? And so literally you can submerge your car like past the engine in, in water and you'll be fine. I guarantee you he has one of those things. Yeah, I'm sure Not he like, also has huge light bars for all the off-roading oh, yeah, he doesn't he, do. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't do. Exactly. Or he's probably got the thing where you can, you can fucking, what is it, like pull something from the front. He's got that like fucking crane oh, winch, thing. Yeah. yeah, the winch thing on the front. And he's probably, t- he never drives with the doors. He's like, fucking doors, dude? Who needs them, dude? I never <laughs> drive with fucking Jeeps doors. Soft top are probably oh. the gayest vehicle, in yeah. my opinion. I don't know if he has a hard dude, top. They're bad. But soft tops yeah, are fucking just... Fucking, dude. I just, really want him to write, I just really want him to write in so we can fucking... Oh, God, that'd be this great. This fucking guy, he is the new sunfish, okay? Because this guy, giving advice to me, somebody who has redefined comedy on YouTube, on the internet... That's what I've done. That's what this channel is fucking. Yeah, we're the best, dude. The best. It's Borat and fucking us, dude. I think there are some channels like Nelk. Nelk is a it's lifestyle funny. channel, though. Yeah. It's, it's funny, but it's yeah. also, it's more than a comedy channel. Yeah, yeah. Austin was saying, like, uh, fucking uh, Steve will do its channel. He's, like, changing people's lives and shit. It's, like, some cool shit, right? It's, like. They're great channels. Different. They're more lifestyle channels. Yeah. As far as comedy goes on the internet, the Danny Mullen channel is all there is. I'm sorry, guys. There's Mark Norman and there are other big stand-ups who are doing a we're good job best. on there. Yeah. When it comes to being born on YouTube. Yeah. Grown on YouTube, yep. thriving on YouTube, making a living off YouTube. The Danny Mullen channel is the apex of YouTube comedy. That's right. This baby. fucking guy who's indistinguishable from a parade of other roided up meathead YouTube strength gurus. Yes. I can't tell the fucking I couldn't pick him out of the fucking lineup of these other hordes of idiots. He's definitely done some roids. I too. like that he fo- he follows Steve Will Do It and Bradley Martin, who yeah. both follow me, by the way, too. Yeah. So I'm sure his heart sunk when he saw that. This guy giving me advice. I don't need. It's e- so funny, dude. It's like it's like Leo's sister giving Mother Teresa advice on how to not be a cum. Oh, here whore. it is, dude. Oh, fuck you. I dude. forgot I had two fucking people in the room with slutty sisters. You sick? What the fuck is wrong with you? Um, when are you gonna lay off my sister, dude? Twenty twenty one, dude. Can we make things? Could that be your I'm New sorry, Year's resolution dude. for God's sake? I don't talk about fucking what, dude. I always forget her name. Is it Jessica Mullen? Yeah, Jessica Mullen. Good old Jessica. You can. You can talk. I've about never it. met a. I've never met a Jessica that isn't a little bit of a whore. I'll be honest. Dude, yeah, all the Jessicas, dude. Yeah, she. Was. Every Jessica is a whore. It's amazing. What's your sister's name? Well, older or younger? I know you like the younger one. What's her name? It's Cher. I've never met parents. a Cher who wasn't obsessed with anal sex. <laughs> 
There was a rumor that That's Cher, a lie, dude. That is star, such a lie. Cher the pop star. Cher the pop star would have, loved anal. You really? know how Motley Crue had trim coordinators going out in the crowd finding the blonde girls with big tits? <laughs> Cher would go around. She'd have her trim coordinators go out and find guys who are well hung to line up outside of her tour Yo, bus and fuck her up the ass. It's probably not well hung then. She probably was looking for guys that were the right you know, size. It You're mistaken. Five to six and a half. Uh huh. And with the right girth. Uh, yeah. To really just put it in there where it's it's pleasurable because if it's too big, dude, I mean, you heard your baby Gemini. She said that she fucking he hits like a nerve, dude, and that she can't feel her legs. Uh, well, uh, I talked to your sister over oh, a cup of tea God. and she said something dissimilar. I got to get back to the sunfish. I don't know. I don't know where this is going to go. Willie G Fitness, dude. I right mean, now, I'm, I'm thinking about just ironically saying that this guy sponsors every podcast at the start of every show so I can reboot my rage once a week about this guy until he just confesses he's a sunfish. That's the only way to make things square with Danny Mullen is you tell me what you are. And uh, unfortunately, the last couple of times it's been a sunfish. Those have been the people who have gotten on my bad side. He he wrote DM me transform to get started. So I DM'd him transform, but then I said, "Hey, buddy, you want to call in your and note our podcast right now? We want to pick your brain about the ways we can improve our content. Let me know. We're here for another hour. I just want to know." He had the strategy of calling his audience a noun, and he called him the Fit Fam, or it's something. It's something that shitty. No. I'm not going to play the video right now, but I gave Jerry just Jerry shit for doing that on his channel. I call my patrons champions. Is that weird? You okay with that? No. Uh, Why not? Uh, you're going to have to go right now live on the podcast. Delete your Patreon and start what? new. No, man. Start fresh. I can't do that. They're my champions. You really think they're champions, Leo? Well, they're trying to be champions. That's all, that's all that matters. Uh, I call them schmoes that you fucked out of 10 bucks. How about that for a name? <laughs> I gotten so many of those motherfuckers laid, dude, all right? At least hand jobs. A few got One guy was like, yeah, dude, I did the fucking... <laughs> we only live once. I got a hand job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Solid, dude. Where do you meet the guy? Where do you meet the guy you got <laughs> the hand job from? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it was a guy or a girl, all right? It works. The, the yeah. finite life is finite line works either way, boys and girls. Well, let's change gears. I'm sorry. It was I'm just a sorry. Yeah, upset. but if Willie G hits me up by the end of this pod, dude, we have another fucking phone call. You're fucking with me. Dude, I love that your dad threw like 17 F bombs out, dude. <laughs> your dad telling me, saying fuck you to me. Was yeah, he's like, is that Leo head. there? Tell him to f go fuck himself. I'm very, so very happy how easily he was talked out of not posting it. Yeah. He wanted it to not be. I'm a judge, dad. You can't. Po okay, okay, fuck fine. Leo and yeah. fuck the horse he rode it on. He was, uh, where's he? Where'd he grow up? He was born in Wichita, Kansas. Oh, shit. That's right. That's awesome, huh? Well, then he moved down to Las Vegas. Then he was up in Squaw Valley. Wow. Oh. Squaw Valley has uh, since been renamed something else. Because and his, his dad wasn't like a successful guy or anything or, or what? Uh... His dad was an alcoholic, a womanizer, and uh, very middle class. Hmm. I think he just bounced from job to job and was a loser. Hmm. No. It's interesting, man. He, uh, he be, Becoming a judge is, is not an easy task. Man. That's pretty commendable. It's, it's awesome. It's admirable. He, Are you serious? It's cool. It's good. If you're going to go into law, it's the best form of law. Absolutely. I was telling my girlfriend because she is one of those chicks who's in college, doesn't have any real life's plan figured out yet. Mm -hmm. Just like me. When mm -hmm. I was in college, I had no idea what the hell I wanted to do. And I'm afraid she's going to tip over into the camp of, oh, let's go to apply to law school. Because well, I'm too lazy to be pre-med and I'm not passionate about anything. So why not just become a pottery major, then take the LSAT so people think I'm successful. Not only is my sister already planning her escape route from the law profession, I talked to one of my college buddies recently. His name was Brandon. He's Jewish, but he looks black. It's very confusing. He's completely He's, Jewish. I, I know those. I, I, there was a girl that was a very attractive girl that used to, we thought was black forever, and then she ended up being Israeli. He's not even that. He, he is a, black. a completely white... What's a Jewish American princess Jap? She's mm -hmm. like the guy. He's the guy or should be the guy equivalent to that. That's what his brother is like yeah. a handsome white Jewish guy. His mom absolutely cheated on his father. Oh, That's really? The, it, he he was hanging out with this guy in our fraternity named Darrell, who Darrell is 
absolutely a black guy, as his name would indicate. Mm. And uh, you it, guys didn't allow too many of those guys in the frat, though. Right? Come on, Leo. That's <laughs> fucking. No, no, that's it was very welcoming. We actually actively recruited black guys. Black guys were sweet. They're I'm, awesome I'm to have totally in the house. Kidding me? Yeah, obviously. I just don't remember a lot of black frat guys at UCLA in general. There, they UCLA act. This was during the Obama years when politicization wasn't really a thing. Nobody talked about politics. Yeah. I was just in Santa Barbara. Wasn't that nice? Dude, there was, a fuck, there was an apartment right next to my girlfriend's. It said on the fucking outside of their window, they had signs made that said, fuck Trump, wear your fucking mask, abolish frats, defund the police, Black Lives Matter. Wow. It, it was so... I, I can tell the girl who wrote those signs is always at risk of passing out or having a heart attack because she's so amped up at all hours of the day. Yeah. Micro aggression toxic masculinity racism yeah it wasn't like that when i was in college but um at uh at ucla it was only like five percent black people and uh the, like i had a couple friends that were sta- they lived on um a floor it was called like the african adventure and it was just all black people and then like my two white friends that i would go up and visit and it was fucking tight. Like there was no BLM. There was no racial tension. So it was just like hanging out, watching fights with a bunch of black dudes. And it was great. It was a fucking great time in this country. I would, oh, the Obama presidency, even if the economy sucked or it was like a Obamacare people hated. It was a great time when things were less politicized. But it was. Uh, it was great. When less politicized, man. And in the Bush era, we just hated the Muslims for a long time. And everyone. <laughs> yeah, Austin wants to get back to that. He, wants, uh, he can't wait. He cannot wait. <laughs> Back when uh, uh, calling a truck driver a towel head because he had a turban was not <laughs> frowned upon or seen as hate speech. Yeah, we had a dude named Darrell and we had this little dude named uh, Dante who was, I think he was four foot nine. We had, we had a, a midget black guy. You guys had a midget black guy? He That's was awesome. fucking, he was rad. He would just freestyle and hang out and make beats in his room, like the nicest guy ever. And then we had this really handsome guy who was a former Abercrombie model named oh, wow. Eves. And I guess, uh, yeah, there was just a very small amount of black people on campus and all the frats wanted the black guys because then any chicks who liked black guys would come to your frat to fuck. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Eves, I I absolutely, that would be a thing we did. I remember I, I got this fucking smoking hot half Asian girls number, Leo, once mm-hmm. outside of Young Research Library. Mm-hmm. And uh, I met her up one night after I'd gotten her number. She had a friend who was shit face drunk talking about how she wanted to get fucked by a black guy. And I fucking got on my phone. I said, hey, Eve, I'm coming over to the frat right now. It's going to be me and you in room 14. We're going to kick out all the other nerds who live there. Room 14 had the big balcony view. It was nice. a, it was a real regal place. And uh, you and I are going to fuck tonight. And so oh, fucking shit. we walked through the door, me and this Asian chick, the girl who loves black dudes and Eve. Eve's got his fucking tongue down this cunt's mouth in less than 30 seconds. Oh, my God. We go to another frat's party that they're throwing. It's just a ruse. My girls, she's pressed up against a wall with her leg like this, like a like a high school cheerleader warming up. Within 15 minutes of our arrival, I'm fingering her, just like in a room full of people. Oh, my God. I take her back. I fuck her on the frat house couch. And uh, I'm sure Eve did the same thing in another room to his condom, girl. Condom? No condom? I wore a condom. I, nice. always, I always wore condoms back then. But um, it was... <laughs> I, I, I was kind of a dick. It was way before fucking Me Too. So I fucked the girl on the couch and um, she like we talked a little bit, kept making out. And then she fell asleep on the couch, like in the middle of a fucking party. And I like nowadays I would have put her in my bed, got her home. But I was like, yeah, dude, the chick I just slammed is she passed out on the couch. And I just like went back to getting fucking hammered. Oh, my God. And uh, I yeah, like that. That's the kind of shit that flew in frats back then. Yeah, yeah it was nuts. I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, uh, and then we heard I still hung out after that. So I don't think she totally hated me. But she never fucked me again, and I was one that got away. A half Asian girl. She was great. She was bone skinny. So skinny girls make your dick feel gigantic, (laughs) which is a great thing for me. Is a half Asian? Yeah, I mean that's what you were looking for for a long time. Now you got a quarter Asian, which you're very happy with. So it's great. She's not quite pure enough, right? But it's still good. It's still good, right? I can still now use words like chink and wop. Oh wait, a wop's in Italian. You cannot say chink now. I can still use words like chink chink and zipper head. Have you had sex with every race? Have you? Well, no, I'm dating an Asian girl. I know, but have you had sex with a black woman? I can say chink. Come on. Have you ever had sex with a black woman? Yeah, absolutely. Nice. She hung out with a bunch of uh, hardcore kids, though. That were straight edge and had the gauges and went to metal shows. Oh, so she was one of the, she was into the, the she wasn't, she was hardly black because of 
Yeah, but I had yeah. sex with her. Nice. Um, Indian. I double teamed her with a famous MMA fighter. Really? Yeah. I think you've told me that story. Um, have you had sex with an Indian woman? Uh, I don't know. I've gotten. Yeah, I have. I really? took an Indian girl's virginity. Really? Yeah. Wow. Have you had sex with you an Indian a girl? List. Yeah. So what does that mean? I can say curry eater now. You. I don't know that's you can only be you have to be dating a girl to be able to use the slurs. Yeah, and, you have to be dating. And yeah. my girlfriend is Asian, so I can say Asian slurs now without any she, blowback. At least she's very small percentage Asian. I mean, she's 25 percent. But I mean, if you really that's double, double digits, bitch. And double checked. Have you double and, checked? And sometimes when I'm screwing around a little bit, I put my hands on the corner of her eyes and I pull them back to make her look slant eyed. And that makes her more Asian for those couple of seconds. And when I do that, Have you ever I, tape them back while you're banging? The great thing about taping just them back straight tape yeah. is then I get like a full minute before the tape breaks where I mm. can just be like, I'm glad we did Hiroshima. Uh, the fucking buck tooth, goddamn yellow skin fortune cookie crackers. And I can just go off and pre, say Chinese. In the pre Mia era, I do remember you going up to, <laughs> to an Asian woman. I believe it was uh, on a trip and you, you looked her straight in the eye. No said, uh, way. What did I say? What did I say? <laughs> What did I say? You said you're Asian. I like you. Oh, that's okay. It's or, you're, or you're hot. You're, like, <laughs> you're Asian. You're hot. Oh yeah, I probably did say that. I just don't. I didn't know if it was some horrendous <laughs> oh, thing I said in a no, black. No, no, no. Now you never say anything racist, dude. The, the worst thing you ever said was to, you know that you wanted to blow up Ireland. To those fucking yeah, Irish chicks. Rewind this clip uh, 15 seconds, and I'll be saying something about fortune cooking cracking yellow skin <laughs> but it's i can say no, those you're things just, you're when, Asian, you're when her eyes are taped up then when her we, eyes are taped because gotcha. then she's more then she that brings her up to 40 percent asian which yeah. is it's hunting season then i can make asian i just have to check if this fucking guy willie g fitness um wrote us just in case you know i mean you never know i fucking asshole dude it's been 15 minutes i said transform willie fucking willie willie Let's go, dude. listen how are leo and i gonna grow on the internet right. if you don't show us the way God, man. I need to be led. <sighs> Robert this Green always talks about you need a mentor, dude. dude. I need a mentor, man. Yeah, we Willie both G, need it, dude. You, Leo, he can help you be better with women. He can. He can help you get in better shape. Better shape. And he, for me, it's just all on the content front. And it's not only how can I be bigger, and I know he has a way bigger following. It's how can I be better, Willie G. Yeah, How man. can I be Come on. fucking better? I heard that Austin did something really infuriating this weekend what were you doing at those garage sales austin you were garage sailing for pokemon cards dude he goes around trying to fucking stiff people trying to steal basically because he doesn't tell them what these cards are really worth he's just like oh yeah <laughs> it, it, it it's a little scummy who are you Rick you know from, what he you know he, what he said to me dude but you're giving him too much credit leo you think yeah. he actually knows what the hell the value is of these cards tell me this isn't such a like a 18 19 year old kid thing to say he's like yeah man and then and then me and me and Dylan, we're going to move out when I sell all the Pokemon cards. We're moving out. It'll, it'll take me like eight months to where I could. Okay, so I'll, I'll just explain the story. So I go to garage Austin, sales. can I just say this first? What? I don't care what the story is. Remember me telling my dad about Clout Kid Craig or whatever his fucking name was, the skateboard of the TikTok stars? Yeah. Better investment than what you did this weekend. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I think I've made more money than you this weekend than you did. We'll see. No, you haven't made any money yet. Well, You bought cards I, that you and your stoned mind think are valuable, <laughs> and you have not resold them at market. Can we call? I've, you've lost money this weekend. Is there anywhere Let's we can get that call? Clear. Can we I, fucking call I've somebody? bought and sold cards many times. I know what they're worth. I'm not dumb. Can we call some place that'll answer that we can ask questions about right now? I would rather, speaking of garage sales, go into a garage and let a car run than do no, that. No, but you have to play Austin and I have to play Dylan, his brother. Oh, we're role playing. Yes. My brother's name is Derek. I thought you meant call A1 Comics and actually well, get these cards act, I mean, it would be great if we had a third guy. No, I actually mean call somebody, but then we're gonna put, you're going to pretend to be Austin. I'm going to pretend to be Dylan. Oh, that sounds like uh, hard to pull off. No, you can pull it off, dude. You can pull off a stone guy. Easy. Austin... You I have think a you, how much money do you think you made this weekend? I heard him say, and I should walk over there and punch you in the face 8, for this. 8,000 or something No, like didn't you say 70,000? It's like 20,000 to maybe $50,000. I haven't even gone through all the cards yet. Jesus. It's I have like 600. Every single card is minimum 100 bucks. Austin, I will let a Sharpay lick peanut butter off my cock 
on the podcast. <laughs> if you in the next year bring in twenty grand or show me twenty okay. grand that you made from trading these Pokemon cards. Yeah, the it just it takes eight months, six sure to eight does, months yeah. for me to send the cards to get professionally graded uh -huh. by PSA. It's gonna and happen then when they get back. I can sell them. Yeah, and they're gonna tell you that. Uh, yeah, these cards are worth. Let's see here. Carry the two two dollars and seventy four cents. Oh, um, well, shoot, Mr. PSA. What's, what is, what's the fucking organization? PSA. Was, uh, no, go ahead. I'm just going to say that, uh, that was going to bomb anyway. I, that bit. But Austin probably spent, how much did you spend this weekend? Um, about a thousand, but that was including shipping stuff and cases that I bought. Okay. But yeah, about $800 in cards. Okay. Well, you're going to make about uh, negative $750 in profit. <laughs> so congratulations. I was, I was going to say, uh. Uh, where do you sell Pokemon cards? Is it eBay? eBay. Like if that? you you look up the card, yeah. PSA ten, because most of mine are going to be nine or tens. Yeah. And you go to sold, and then you'll see like uh, this card sold for a thousand dollars yesterday. Yeah. Like they sell so frequently, you can just click sold on so, eBay. So you know, the you know, me and Danny have a little life experience. I've done something sort of like this once, and it wasn't as extravagant, and I learned a lesson because. I have a buddy who's in memorabilia, um, and this is what he told me. I There was a time when all of a sudden there was this purple beanie baby. Do you remember the beanie baby? I know, yes. I know the one you're Shut talking up, about. Shut up, Austin. Yeah. There was a time where this, this fucking purple beanie baby was all of a sudden everybody was like, dude. Was that it the thing's... Princess Diana bear? Yes. I have one. All of a sudden, I bought that one, and then I, and then I learned my lesson. Everybody was saying that this bear was worth fucking 30,000, 20,000, 1500, whatever. It was it, there were many different like ideas of what this bear could be worth and people were buying it up. So I went to a little toy store and that had like older toys and they happened to have the Princess Diana beanie baby. Mm -hmm. So I talked to the guy that owned the store and wait, I'm wait, like it, it was purple? It was purple, yeah. Uh was it bloody and partially decapitated from the car wreck? Fuck. <laughs> She was a saint. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I talked to the guy and I go, "Hey, man, I mean, what's up with these? How come they're they're all over the internet?" And he goes, "Well, he goes, that's the kind of that's just what happens on eBay." He goes, "I could just say, hey, that bear's worth fifty grand." He's like, "But I gotta sell it." And not only that, he goes, "Then when you get a lot of inventory, all of a sudden." Nobody wants to buy it anymore. So I'm not saying that's what's going to happen with the cards, but Logan Paul, Gary V, there's a lot of brouhaha about these Pokemon cards. So when everybody starts selling them, the value of the card dips down a little bit because there's much more inventory. It's all about supply and demand. If there was only five of those fucking bears, then yeah, it's possible it'd be worth 50 grand. But you could put anything for sale for any price on the internet and you you have to sell it so well, i mean well, my well, plan yeah. is to sell them within in eight months when i get them back but i yeah. have cards that i've just been holding on to from when i was 11 that used to be worth 20 bucks and i go oh I'll hold on to it now it's a 300 to 600 dollar card but, if i but, sold it today but the thing is mm -hmm. leo makes a good point is what it's allegedly worth in market is different than money that you have in your bank account right. and to be fair it's not yeah. a perfect analogy because one of the problems with the princess diana bear <laughs> is it came with this pre-recorded <laughs> soundbite that when you pressed a button it would go <laughs> <laughs> it did it did no and so it it was a little uh edgy for the target market of Dude, baby baby why did that guy take off so fast with princess diane i mean come on why were they going 120 miles an hour what were they running from that is a weird thing that happened anyway what i'm saying is we gotta see the we gotta sell them you gotta sell them and uh I can Don't. sell them as is without getting them graded for an easy five times profit of what I spent. I Austin, think that you should do that is what I'm. You should do that before this fad becomes what it is a fad. And it's I not think, really a fad though. The prices have been going up for like ten years now. Austin, I've been into collecting. How much money have you made selling cards of any variety right now? Tell me, lifetime Maybe like a thousand. Well, you made one thousand dollars. So I used to, but I was a kid. I didn't have money. Mm -hmm. You made a thousand dollars. Austin, right now what you're doing, I see it as parallel to what the sunfish, excuse me, the ex-sunfish Ruman used to do, or is still doing. Oh God, you bringing it back to poor Ruman. You Ruman, thinking that you're gonna strike it rich 
of going to some garage sales and asking if they have a Blastoise is equivalent to Ruman thinking that shoving a camera in his girlfriend's face with no mic, no script, no subtitles, and thinking he's going to strike it rich on Instagram. Well, I actually you're got trying two Charizards. To so. Good. Great. I'm sure you're going to try to sell those. And you're going to find they're worth $15 combined. And then uh, I'm not going to have to. You should have to do something bad, too, because I know I said I would get blown by a Sharpay. OK, we can have whatever challenge, but there, I'm sending a bunch of cards to get graded. A lot of them aren't worth that. And all the ones that I'm not going to send, I will sell immediately. So then we can see if I actually make my money back because I think I can make my money back. Plus a lot of profit. Yeah, think is the key those. word. If, if a guy who's going to say that he made more money than me this weekend, but he was only made a thousand lifetime, and we know a thousand is actually like a hundred bucks. He made it recess in sixth grade. Well, it's not like buying Pokemon cards is my main for, source of income or anything. But I'm yeah, saying you're, hobby. you're way too confident, way too smarmy about this right now. I think you made a terrible investment. I think you're completely wasting your time, and I think you need to focus on a real craft like you're producing, like your videography, like you're editing, and leave these stupid fads to the fools. I've made pretty good investments. I mean, this equipment here is about $6,000 investment, and now I'm on the biggest comedy channel of all of YouTube. Yeah, That's you, right, and you went down in flames as the graphic illustrated it this week that was on the main funny, channel. <laughs> the, the, the plane crash joke was really funny. Mm. Austin, if you haven't seen the main channel video this week, which you absolutely should, Austin was approaching tables. Everybody else got right into it. I mean, even Jerry, who's about as natural a performer as a fucking deaf mute. <laughs> like, even he went right up to that table and got to the bottom line. I'm being charged with raping a mascot. Austin goes up, makes some crack about the girl's temperature, asks them if they're enjoying their stay in Palm Springs. Austin, it took you... You set me up to fail. You said that we were going to be trying to find hot chicks to get their phone number, and that that was my zone. I was like, okay, I got what I wanted to say, and I wanted to go up to some girls and try to get their phone number. You sent me to the fucking G, like, geriatric table with a bunch of old ladies to go hit on them, and then that just took me out of the zone, and I was... A little drunk. I'm sure one of them would have pushed your head down right <laughs> And I didn't crotch. have a mask, and they didn't like uh, Austin, is this blind date? I mean, is this a fucking pickup channel? That's what you is told. This... That was the bit. At least that's what Leo the said. We were is... going to get girls' phone numbers. Okay. So if I was thinking. If it's not, f if you're making small talk about the fucking weather without a mask next to them when they're trying to eat a meal, obviously they're going to tell you to fuck off. The idea of this channel is to do funny shit. And if you're dismissed without telling them that you're a rapist or whatever your pilot character did, then it's not funny. You cut out the part where I went back and did the bit, though. Because I'd lost faith after the 45 seconds I saw. That's all you get with me. It was funny seconds. if you it, watched the, the part where I went back. You're remembering it as funny. You're probably remembering the other two interactions as funny. Did you too, not though. watch it, though? I probably did, and I probably hated it. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember. I Look, think I did watch it, and I don't think it was funny. I don't think it was that funny, but it wasn't like... I did at least attempt the joke. Like, I went mm. back. It just didn't make mm. the video. Which Every now and then, look, life will teach you a lesson. So even if me and Danny, even if you make profit this time, all we're saying is sometimes when you go, you, you follow the fucking, I don't know, you the leprechaun to the golden, you know, to the fucking bottom of the rainbow, you're going to get fucked. All right. So is if that you what really happens can, when you reach the bottom of the rainbow? Oh, yeah, dude. You get oh, fucked. Wow. I thought there was Leprechauns have huge cocks, dude. Oh, shit. And they have red Irish, pubic hair. Yeah. Irish people have skinny penises. I wouldn't know. I'm Irish. <laughs> hey, at so, least girls will be more willing to do anal, you know, if you, have, you, a skinny you have a skinny dick, cock. Yeah. So. so listen, go sell those cards now if you can, because that'd be cool if you can, uh, you know, and uh, show us the receipts. We're going to need to see some receipts from eBay or wherever the hell you're selling them. And uh, we'll go from there. Austin, uh, a smarter investment would have been to invest in fire and light $1,000 on fire. <laughs> what's, because at what's least you would have saved time. If I do burn all my money away in this, what is, what, what's my repercussion? You're fired. How about that, Austin? No, oh, oh, come okay. on. <laughs> <laughs> really that just got kind of heavy. <laughs> yeah, that's so, then what, all, all this equipment would be gone. Who knows who could do this? Yeah, well, then. it's in my house, so he's going to have to get through the alarm and the locked doors. You just continually, you have to like choke him out once a week when he tries to come <laughs> yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, go, hey, wait up, dude. Austin's here again. Let me go just he take comes care in of this. With hey, a, Austin, what's up? He comes in with a ski mask. His <laughs> blinding blonde hair is coming through the aisle. Coming through the aisle. <laughs> There's probably some sort of California squatting law that's like, oh, you left your property at their house for a year now. It's theirs. Oh my God, Austin, dude. can we talk? I, I don't like to get too political, but this is going to affect... The future of the Danny Mullen channel. What is going on with? I'm hearing crazy stuff about tax laws. Yeah. I'm hearing that 
Not only is California state income tax going to jump up to 16% for the top bracket, I hear that it's going to follow you around if you leave California. I'm hearing that property taxes are going to go through the roof. Are you on top of this or are you just keeping tabs on uh, lynchings and uh, cross burnings and things of that nature? I I, I, I do know <laughs> somewhat and it's it's a problem that New York and California are having that where they're taxing the fuck out of the wealthy people that make jobs. Yeah, it's going to be leaving. you after it's you sell your Pokemon. Over, so, <laughs> it's over making, 400K, right? To get that. Is that what they say is wealthy? You have to make over 400K to be in this tax bracket. I mean, the whole 400K, your taxes aren't going to go up. I'll check that yeah, out. I mean, your taxes are only yeah, going to increase if you make 400 more. That's just bullshit. 75% of Americans received an average tax cut of like two grand because of Trump. If you have a child... You, they doubled the the tax uh, cut that you get for having a kid. There's different things like that, and they're on like a timer. Trump's going to extend the tax cuts and keep them going, but Biden's already said he's going to repeal all of Trump's tax cuts, and then he's going to bullshit make his own tax plan, which you know is probably just going to end up fucking everybody over and making them pay more money for shit that mm -hmm. no one really uses. I mean, I, d I haven't mm -hmm. received anything from the government. They didn't give me a stimulus check or unemployment when I applied for them. Did, like, I mean, I don't make a lot of money or anything, but here's what I, I see. don't want to give 60 percent of my cash for health care that I could just be a responsible adult and pay one hundred and fifty dollars a month for the rest of my life and not have to give up half my income for um, health care. So, yeah, see, I, I still don't know. I see this is the problem with in, the, in today's world. I just don't know what to believe or what the actual facts are. Unfortunately, the tax brackets are. I've been led to believe that the top tax bracket is lower than it actually is. Okay. This for California state income tax, basic, you're basically getting hit with 10%. It's actually pretty fucked because the 9.3% income tax starts at $56,000 which is pretty fucking low to be getting an additional it's 10%. It's like not even enough money to really yeah, live here live adequately. Here at all. Agreed. And then it goes up to 13.3% if you're at a million or higher. Mm. But I mean, the difference between 9.3 and 13.3 is, uh, it's, I mean, it's basically the same fucking number and 56 grand to a million is a pretty significant fucking leap there. People don't realize, they think that the, oh, we can just tax the billionaires and then we can fix everything. Well, they're not actually billionaires. They have assets, it's, they have companies that are worth money but it's not liquid money that you can just tax people the only way you can fund a lot of this bullshit is to just heavily tax the middle class that's always been what they do because it's the only way you can afford any of these programs really here we have the federal income tax brackets this is for 2019 so this might have changed slightly it is 35 percent of your income federally mm -hmm. if you make over 204,000. Okay. Thirty-five percent, and then two hundred four thousand. That's about ten percent in California. So that's forty-five percent of your income if you're making two hundred four grand. Which, if I was making two hundred four grand, that's a lot of money. Yeah. But if you're a family and you make two hundred four thousand dollars a year in a city like Los Angeles, you're almost broke, yeah. and you're, the government is taking damn near half your yeah. fucking money. Well, I can tell you, there are ways around it. I mean, yeah, it, having a, a mysterious sugar mama fund no, your no, bank no, account not, and not, not telling anybody how much you're worth. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, having a business that just doesn't make any money. Uh huh. That's what you need to do. Not, not. Look, I know a man. Is he's a man that's made a lot of money, and I I know him very well. Um, it's not my father, is but he, it's uh, is the he father a, figure. Is he uh, an Italian? He likes to get his dick sucked in front of Best Buys. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> okay. Um, but. When you when you get into a certain tax bracket that you you, you need to like what Donald does like he apparently lost money this year right yeah and that's how you you kind of get away from from having so you could have a videography business that just for some reason you put a lot of money in but it never makes money you yeah get it, you get what I'm saying yeah I get what you're saying and uh, that totally works if you're fucking real wealthy you yeah, have the resources works. to pay yeah. some fucking brainiac mm -hmm. uh, brainiac uh, i'm substituting that word for jew a tax attorney who will go in there and fucking clean all your shit up i know a certain youtuber who paid a yeah a, a pittance in taxes mm -hmm. given his insane income what do you think he did for sure that's what he did well it's because it's so hard to get tax cuts passed so the only well, way they've been Donald able to reasonably did. get things down yeah. is to add these tax write-offs or loopholes that you can there use and then people get mad that people are utilizing what's legally in the system it's like okay yeah. if you want to get rid of the loopholes 
then drop all of the taxes flat rate down, and then you don't have to worry about that bullshit. You could write off this entire. I mean, you could write off every cent you give to Austin. Austin, I do. Could be your money pit that you need to <laughs> really do. help you yeah. not pay that thirty. He's my money pit. Yeah. Sometimes he's my cum pit if I'm feeling right. lonely. So, so this guy, so that big YouTuber that paid a pittance or whatever, he he had he must have had some business that was losing money, right? I don't know how he did it. Is I don't want to talk too much about right, this. Right. But uh, it might have been Clout Kid Kenny or whatever his yeah. fucking name was. Cody. Clout Kid Cody. <laughs> you ever, all right, for example. I, I just, I, it sounds so stupid when we talk politics mm -hmm. because Austin's knowledge of taxes are so theoretical because the dude lives in a trailer in his mom's backyard. True. True. You and I actually have some money, some but money, yeah. we're, we're new we're, we're newbies. Very fucking new. We're new it. to this. And we, we both have some people that we've talked to that have told us what they do. And that's what I'm saying. And, uh, you know, you, you have those YouTubers. I have people that I know. And they all tell me that at some point you need some kind of business that is, isn't making money that you could just put, you know, basically it's 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 not fraud, but it's it's, pretty it's a loophole. Idea. It's a loophole in in the system. It's what Donald. I mean, why did he pay seven hundred and fifty dollars? I think that's not true. Yeah, I, I, not I think true. the case is that that's fucking bullshit. That Donald pays yeah, seven hundred fifty bucks. I don't care how good of a tax attorney you have. Yeah. That's a, a lie perpetrated by socialists, uh -huh. is that the rich need to pay their fair share. Fucking bullshit. Okay. Paid, e even yeah. the YouTuber I said who paid quote a pittance, it was still, a still paid upwards of a million dollars in right. taxes. Right. Right, right, right. Uh, my fucking dad pays flat out 50% of his money to the government every mm -hmm. year. Yeah, yeah. And my dad drives a Ford truck, lives in a one story a job, house yeah. with no pool, He's a judge. three bedrooms. Yeah. He's a public fucking servant. Mm -hmm. And uh, Austin, I think you said this, the middle class are the ones who really get fucked. Like yeah. your dad. And middle class, dad. I would say if you have a family, it's anywhere between $300,000 and $50,000 that kind of income level because they don't have the resources to have uh, some insane like fucking Clinton-esque foundation where they're just laundering their money. Well, the reason why you see all these multi-billion dollar companies and stuff endorse higher taxes in the left is because they don't like the middle class or small businesses because that's competition. Those are people that could rise up and t pull them down from their position. Yeah. You know? How do you like uh, Amazon fucking going all rah, rah, rah over BLM? I'm sure Jeff Bezos is rock hard over the idea of people going and smashing up storefronts. I, I'm sure in another life he was a Black Panther. Clearly, he's just super invested into racial politics. Oh yeah, he cares. I, he's the next M uh, MLK. Oh, he cares. Austin's being ironic. He's commenting on how it's ridiculous that these big companies like Visa and State Farm pretend they're invested in social issues. I use this metaphor a lot, but they have their finger to the fucking wind. What is going to get us likes on Instagram and lots of support on Facebook? That's like when Gillette did that fucking bullshit oh Me God. Too ad about how men need to we start can't treating help. women fairly. But it was they, just like, they shouldn't be wrestling in the backyard. Yeah, it's a, I walked by with my girlfriend, an Amazon store in Isla Vista, mm -hmm. and they have a fat BLM fucking banner in there. Yeah, that's right. Fucking Jeff Bezos, a veritable sociopath with a bald head mm -hmm. with a house that has a ballroom in it in Washington, D.C. Uh, he's out there fighting a good. He is a natural Harriet Tubman. <laughs> when he does, when he has a weekend off from launching missiles into space mm -hmm. and uh, redefining how people consume products and changing web services, he's penning the next Uncle Tom's cabin, Austin. It's true. That's he what really he cares. He, he really cares. So, point of the story is, fuck Amazon, have a business that doesn't make money. When you start getting a lot of money, then you need like some money pit. I feel like we're all completely politically illiterate. Yeah. But Leo in particular, I feel like you just over a couple beers heard about this money pit theory and you're just repeating it now as if it's, is it something you've no. done? Uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe, okay. Maybe I've done it once. Once? Absolutely. Yeah, maybe maybe I've maybe I've I've finagled some and, taxes in unless order to, you start being honest, we're just gonna think you're full of shit. I just don't file. I don't my taxes. I don't like to talk about tax yeah. stuff. It's because you don't make any money, Austin. I don't like to talk yeah. about tax stuff, but there was a year where a good friend of mine might have lied about certain losses on gambling in Vegas, which is a write off, by the way. And that helped him out. Yeah. yeah. All the stories I've heard, because I do have a lot of rich buddies. I was telling my dad about yeah, this guy. Yeah, what, what does Fu do? Fu, all those guys get fucking... 
if they pull some kind of scheme, like if they have a tax accountant who's a genius and they have this coup, how they're going to save a bunch of money, it really amounts to they save 50 grand or $100,000 mm. on their 13 million they made that fucking year. Right. So they're still paying three, four million in fucking taxes. Like that's what they're saving. Yeah. Adam Carolla talks about this. Adam Carolla on an old episode on Love Line mm-hmm. uh, just about fucking blew his stack. Is that a phrase people use? Over <laughs> some fucking chick calling in and reciting that the rich need to pay their fair share propaganda. Adam Carolla's like, cunt, you think I don't pay taxes? I bought the U.S. government a predator drone this last filing season. <laughs> I paid fucking How much two point three million dollars. Oh, who goddamn knows? He paid like two point three million dollars in taxes yeah, that what's year. It is like really worth? ridiculous, man. It is, man. But like, then we complain here, and then have you? I mean, if we looked at the tax plans of other countries, I know, like, I know one place specifically that had free colleges, and I think it was like Denmark. It was. They're paying like 75% taxes. Like everybody, everybody just pays like 75 to 80%. You're, taxes. Yeah, you're basically like just giving all of your money. Government. Yeah. Exactly. In most countries, it's like that. I so. mean, what, when was the last time Denmark invented something good? The last, True. the last practical product that came out of Scandinavia was the wooden shoe. Mm. <laughs> uh, they might have invented Spotify. That might be their one yeah. good thing. But I love that argument people make. It's like, well, they have it all figured out in Scandinavia. It's great. Bitch, we invented the internet. The phone you use the internet with in every meaningful app, almost, that you visit while you're using the internet on yeah. your smartphone. That's right. And that's just in the past century. Yeah. That's this century. Yeah. The century before that, what did we, oh, the airplane, uh, the mass-produced car. We came up with uh, an, a fucking antibiotics, vaccines. What All the like? medical penicillin. stuff. Penicillin. Was that us? Did we come up with penicillin? I think so. What? I Maybe did we? That might have been somebody in the Southern Hemisphere. I'm going to look up penicillin. It was an old white guy. That's for syphilis, dude. Was he on vacation? He saved a couple people that had the syphilis, buddy. You guys can keep talking. I'm going to look up penicillin. I want to talk about property tax because I think they're fucked. Oh, Because you you went to my my house, right? Mm -hmm. If you have to pay 1% to 2% per year for property tax, let's just say it's 1%. That means in 100 years, me giving my house from me to like my grandkids, you have to buy your property back from the government every century, which is just... You, that's not owning now, private property. Now, does any state not have property tax? All right, the guy who invented penicillin was Scottish as shit. Still not Scandinavia. It's, uh, uh, it pays for the federal education system, which in itself I think Property is tax, there is no place that you can not. I mean, Florida and Texas don't have income tax, right? Yeah, public yeah, schooling ca- is done through property California's tax. tax is actually relatively low, though. But I yeah. hear that the left has plans to change that, which is why I was just getting back at I think the Danny Mullen crew relocating to Las Vegas is something to really think about. Sounds pretty cool. I think we will. We can check back in a year and see where we're at. Leo see seems hesitant to this idea. Leo is a mama's boy. The is, desert is the desert. Might drive me crazy, dude. I might lose it in the desert, Danny. They've got an abundance of the two things you cherish most. You know what those are? <laughs> what fucking women and. What, what what do I what's the other thing parking lots oh you yeah. son there are of a, a bitch. lot of strip malls in Las Vegas um look yeah man I think I think a, a move something like that we also I think we can be men and make it here with all the greats you know what I mean first of all Leo the problem is that funding the operation and getting a house for everybody to live in mm. that that's something I would pay for mm-hmm. and I want to get everybody under one roof but that's going to be like three times as expensive out here literally three times as expensive so yeah. it's I mean yeah at one point it's, at some point you can say like oh yeah all the best movers and shakers and the talents are in this industry and yeah, like I can make it in California I've got what it takes but at some point it comes down to practical accounting it's not and it's it's, the reality that just in california the taxes you pay for this state could fund a compound that we could move in fan jerry and in laniggy and cameraman nico yeah yeah look i absolutely man and i'm not gonna i'm I'm gonna be what what do you really have that's keeping you in la well i got my family out here i mean they're four hours away i know i i could probably even i've got my family now and then i get a look i i love acting all right i know that you might not know this about me, but every now and then I get a cool audition that I like to, you know, sink my teeth into. Um, Leo, you're you. 
the bird, the bridge has been burned to the acting world ever since the Me Too, right? Well, we don't know that. I mean, look, I've still gotten some good opportunities, and I these guys Google you after you walk out of the audition. It's possible, but who knows? And I mean, I, I mean, just Jeremy Piven just got a Jeremy Piven just got a Hallmark movie. You never know. Hallmark movie? Yeah. He's a. Uh, I know, I know. Down, it's, it's the trek back, dude. All I'm saying is. I've still I've gotten the opportunity. I've been right there. I like I like being in the in the movie industry or having the ability to at least audition for a soap every now and then something cool. Um, I don't even have that. I Leo, mean, do you really think that's a valid reason to stay in Los Angeles? In the no, past but, the past two years, which has been a more successful part of your life? Auditioning for soap operas, which why the fuck do you want to be in a soap opera? I, just, I don't know. Just it's fun to act, man. It's, it's, it's fun. fun to do comedy. It is fun to and do save a I bunch love, of money, I love right? Being part of this channel, absolutely. Moving to Vegas, I'll, I'm not gonna be part of the. Speak your I'm mind, honestly, slow, right now. I'm not gonna slow down the growth of this channel, and if at that point it makes tremendous sense to do that, but let's I mean, talk, I don't know let's that talk I would honestly. Live, I want to know. I don't know keeping, that I would live in the same house. I want to know people, what's but. keeping you in LA because the soap uh -huh. thing. I don't know if I buy that. It, th that I like an opportunity. Well, it would literally mean like I, I probably just drop my agent. I would never go to acting class for if you lived at least in Vegas. for a while. Yeah, but what um, in in L.A. What's the last? And I'm not asking this to be a dick, but what was the last big thing you booked in L.A. in the mainstream um, world? Black Jesus in 2019. 2019. What part of 2019? It's the beginning of 2019. And have you gotten? a bigger lift financially and as far as fanfare and recognition from that or for your own endeavors? Probably my own endeavors. Probably? No, for sure. How many people endeavors. have recognized you on the streets I, I or messaged you on that, Instagram for Black Jesus? It's more, it, it's more like something for my own soul. Like, I'm not saying... So, walking into a but, fucking cattle call and having some cokehead, probably hard. pedophile director <laughs> hand you a script written by another cokehead pedophile uh -huh. and being told to fucking tap dance. I that is fulfilling. It's, I know it's not glamorized. I mean, look, that, the guy was the assistant director on Borat. That wasn't, it was a nice project. But what I'm saying is, that's not what would keep me from moving. Um, I think it would be, it would be the end of my relationship probably. Um, I would, it's not permanent or anything. I don't know that I would buy property out there, but it would, you know, I probably wouldn't want to live in the house with Fanjeri and in Linigi and Nico. You could absolutely yeah. have your own place. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, dude, I love the podcast. The podcast there would be great. I'm not saying that we can't. I don't think that it'd be wild to think we could do something in downtown Los Angeles. You live right next to downtown. I'm pretty sure we can get a little box office there, and then we could definitely have Nico and Jerry time down in the street with bombs or fucking random business people i'm sure it'd be similar we could do something like that it's not like uh the strip is the only place it's possible just right now uh -huh. right now the channel could absolutely afford to get a house a five bedroom really nice house in las vegas for everybody to live in rent free rent free yeah plus a studio in vegas would you want to yeah. happen right now would you buy it, a house or what would you do with it a could house? buy a house absolutely right now in los angeles uh, we would get laughed at by any real estate agent if we tried to make that happen. This house right now costs three hundred thousand dollars more than Adam Foo's five hundred five hundred thousand mm -hmm. five bedroom house. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're thinking in this area, that. and I like I like that you live in this area. This is this is where the big guys are. You're by Santa Monica. You're close to. But what collaborating with people sucks anyway. Haven't we realized that? Yeah. Yes and no. But listen. But also, you're not thinking that outside of the box. Like. There are seven hundred thousand dollar four bedroom beautiful homes for sale in Calabasas right now. There are beautiful. There are seven hundred thousand dollar homes in the hills, maybe three bedrooms with a view and a pool that you could get right here in Los Angeles, not that far. And I understand that you know Vegas, it's going to be a nicer house. You might be able to put Fangieri in a wing of his own house, so when he destroys his room and. There's the stench when he coming molests from a 16 it. year old when he brings over a 16 year old. Yeah, we're not liable and stuff like that. I get it. But you could still buy well, something. Let's, out let's get here. back down. Why are you afraid? So your girlfriend is the primary. What's girlfriend, the primary reason? family? Um, you, you know, my mom just got sick this year or whatever you want to call it. And like, I'd like to be a little bit closer than four hours. Like, it's not something 
you're afraid it's interesting to, but to talk. don't you think it'd be good for you to get away the best move i ever it, made of course was it's to get gonna away be good from for parents. me dude it's i'm gonna make more money out there i'm gonna be way more focused it's probably gonna be better my heart is just it's not gonna be an easy decision is all i'm saying mm-hmm. that's all i'm saying okay I agree with the first thing you said, but I understand yeah. the second thing you said yeah. that because of your heart, I'm just telling you, man, me I'm moving far, trend, me bro. moving far away from my parents was the best move I ever made. It is a great move. And mm. I know that it would be a great move, especially for my own success. And I know that, you know, there's things we could do with the podcast to really just exponentially, you know, make this grow as well. And I understand that, uh, you know, I really do want, I'm in it for the, you know, for the long haul, I, I really like what we're doing here and, and I like the content we're making. So I'm not going to slow down the train, yeah. but uh, it, it is, uh, you know, just, just have faith that I'm going to, I'll figure it out either way. And, um, you know, I'm, my future is, is on this, this, this train. It's not on some third rate soap opera. <laughs> No, dude. It, I like auditioning for stuff because it's fucking so hard, bro. It's just like a difficult thing. You got to be in a nice. It's like auditions. Are, acting is for losers. Audition. It, you know who else puts a high premium on acting and auditions? Rumon. <laughs> Look where that guy's fucking career is. It could be. You could be on a cool Netflix show like fucking Umbrella Academy, though. You know that's cool. Or you can be Gerard Way and be the guy who writes Umbrella Academy yeah, and cool. starts his own band and does his own fucking thing. Absolutely. And I'd like to. Yeah, yeah. The Danny Mullen movie one day would be sick. Talk about a talented fucking guy, Gerard Way, the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Mm-hmm starts one of the most important emo bands the biggest emo band ever sells millions and millions of records plays festivals huge shows it was worth like 30 mil off that then uh oh yeah writes an award-winning winning comic book called the umbrella academy that gets picked yeah. up and turned into a hit netflix fucking show yeah, guess, that guy's a, a winner genius dude look and yeah and it would be cool man i'm not gonna lie it would be it would be funny and obviously my content my own channel it's growing slightly and i think it would grow a lot it would be easier your channel's grown a lot there. yeah it's grown a lot and i i think it would be cool yeah that'd be so great to have all those fuckers in in one house and uh and see all that happen so yeah it, it, you know it's not something that i don't think is a good idea how much do i have to pay you to lick fan jerry's asshole oh god dude, i don't know that i could ever look at myself in the mirror after, after doing that. F- so i couldn't I, I don't know that i would do it for any amount of money <laughs> i would just like spend it on i would spend it on trying to drown that memory out Tequila and counseling. Yeah, and I would, I'd kill my, I'd die. I'd die shortly after. Can I tell you what shoot it would be after? Oh God, what shoot? The shoot where we went out with Right Dick Ralph the Joshua Tree. <laughs> after a full day of shooting. Yeah, I would, I would, I would just, I, I would take the money and then I don't know what I would do. I mean, you'd never see me again. <laughs> I would just go to like Switzerland and just pay Swiss hookers <laughs> to blow me for the rest of my days until uh-huh. I died. <laughs> I would die such a fucked up death. Well, a million dollars would you do it? No cameras, just me and Austin and the crew in the room with a couple of beers no, in our hands. Dude. I would honestly say no, honestly to that. Imagine the image, Austin, of Fan Jerry on his back with his palms on his inner legs, pulling his legs back, and then Leo on his hands and knees with his hair up in a ponytail. Just the worst. just the mental just, picture of that is bringing me close to throwing up. It's some hell, dude. It's some hellish kind of fucked up thing to think about. It's almost like, uh, yeah, it's like, well, maybe what hell would be like. You have to I wonder if Jerry's someone asshole. has gone down on Fan Jerry's asshole, and if so, we should get them on the podcast because I bet they're a pretty interesting That's girl. That's <laughs> actually a really good idea. We yeah. just talk to somebody that ate Fan Jerry's asshole. <laughs> well, we can try to get his son on the phone, I'm sure. I'm, okay, uh, one, I have to check one more time to see if this fucking Willie G hit us up, dude. <laughs> yeah, man, I think we're ready to wrap. Yeah. What time Willie is it, G didn't hit us up, uh, dude. Hour four five. Yeah, I think we're ready to wrap. Come on, Willie G. No, dude, what a fuck. And he posted a story. Guys, this wind is crazy. What this fucking piece of shit this guy is. Let me see this. Let me make one last comment on Willie G. Dude, what a fucking asshole that guy is. Austin, you moving to, uh, to Vegas? Yeah, I'm, I'm literally down to do anything. <laughs> They're trying to film a... Oh. Apparently, he hasn't heard of a microphone dead cat that'll protect his audio. But of course, he's the guy who's going to give me advice on how to improve my YouTube channel. I want to throw your... Leo, can I throw your phone as hard as I can no, against the wall? No, you okay. can't do that. I don't have a screen <laughs> okay. protector like so, you. It's okay, man. All right, guys. That was a Leo and Danny show. This motherfucker. All right, guys. Well, I love you all. Um, 
I got some Jesus Danny merch. I, it's, it's it hasn't sick. been sent in the mail, but yeah, the canvas it's pretty cam sick. guys. It, yeah, it's, it's sick. sick merch. Yeah. yeah, it's cool, man. Uh, so check it out. Um, maybe we could put the link in the bio, but I'll, at some point I'll get the shirt and I'll wear it so you guys could see it on me. But uh, yeah, check it out. And there, it's pretty sick. I'd fucking rock, I'd rock one for sure. I think we keep both merch links in the bio. No, we do. Okay, episode. cool. Yeah, check it out, guys, down below if you haven't. Um, and uh, it's a good pod, man. I like going deep every now and then. Yeah, I like telling my dad about my new business ventures. That too. was unbelievably funny. Huh. Mm. 